guys and welcome to Debbie's Rusty Brush. Today what we're going to do is we are going to take a painting that I painted when I first started my journey in my creative line with Debbie's Rusty Brush. This painting at the time I was happy with, but as I've grown and as I've learned, I'm not happy with it at all. There's no movement, there's no interest. Um, I did do some shadowing um, and that kind of thing, but not as much as should have been done. Um, and so I have learned a lot since I started my journey. So we are going to paint over this painting and I'm going to insert a picture now. So it's this sunflower painting that I'm talking about. Um, as you can tell, it's just there. There's no movement. Uh, there's no dimension to it really. Um, and no excitement. It's just there. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint over it, but there's a couple of things that we're going to do. We're going to paint over it, but we're going to bring back aspects of the original painting into our new creation. We're also going to paint it while it's in its frame. So we will paint this frame to coordinate well with the picture that we're going to paint. Now, when I started this painting, I had no idea what I was going to do because I needed to bring back cover up, layer, bring back, and see what the painting itself was asking me to do. So I have to tell you that I am obsessed with the way this turned out. So I hope that you guys stay until the end to see what we turn this really poor sunflower painting into. All right. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you hit that little bell thing, it'll give you notifications anytime I upload a video, which is typically Thursdays, but sometimes I do more than one a week, and sometimes I'll switch days if I've got something going on. Um, I do uh, art videos, thrifting videos, upcycling videos. Um, in fact, this was supposed to be an upcycling video, but um, Facebook failed me. I did it as a Facebook Live. Facebook failed me and didn't download onto my phone. So I probably will download that onto my computer and edit it another time. But I'm not real familiar with the editing program I've got on my computer. I tend to do all of this on my phone. Um, so it'll take me some time to figure that out and get to where we want to be. And then I'll get that one uploaded. So without further ado, let's get going on this painting. Okay guys, we're going to start just by um, using DIY in Apothecary and we're going to just put a layer over the entire frame and picture um, and just get a good clean base going. Like I said, not sure where I'm going with it, what I'm going to do, but um, I wanted to get a, a good base. Now we've got some... Uh, blue iris and I've got a putty knife and I'm just scraping some up where um, kind of you know the blank area will be the sky possibly um, and now I've got cowgirl coral and I'm just getting some of that on with a putty knife or a, a palette knife scraping some of that along the frame because we do want some interest in the frame as we uh, cover that up and bring it back um, and now I have got some um, DIY Prom Queen, and it's just this light blue, but it's mixing in with the other and just changing our base around. Now we're just going to dry it quickly, and then we've got some more of the Prom Queen um, going in there with a palette knife this time. Um, just to get some texture and some dimension and as you can tell we pull a lot of that off when we use the paper towel um, but that gives some good different texture in there as well then we're going to give it a good dry
And now we're just going to put some green down here along the bottom. This is DIY's Salty Kiss. And just taking some and putting it on with the palette knife. No rhyme, no reason. Um, here again, I'm still kind of thinking uh, ground on the bottom here with the green grass and blue in the sky up there. Um, adding in some more prom queen up there and giving it a mist so that it flows on there a little better. And here I'm not too sure what I'm doing. I got cherry picked. I'm thinking maybe some mountains in here, but I'm not too sure. Um, just kind of getting that shape in and moving that uh, purple around. Cherry picked is kind of a, a deep, deep cherry, basically. Now I'm putting some white up here. And going back in with some more cherry picked. Um, I've kind of abandoned the mountain idea and just getting some colors mixed in here. Um, I do like the way it, this has some darker and some lighter in there. Now I've got some faded burlap that I'm going. I'm still kind of thinking this bottom is the ground area um, to what we're doing. And so faded burlap kind of um, a kind of dust kind of look to it. Okay, and give it a quick dry, and now we're going to sand. I want to bring back some of those elements, see where we are, what I think that it's going to ask me to do to it, um, what kind of elements we're going to bring back, and just figure out where we're going with this. Um, with the water, I spray it, and then I can do a little wet distressing with it, so I'm just wiping back some of that paint in some different areas. And so I'm kind of trying to decide which direction I want the painting to go, um, what I want to bring back. Now I have brought back a little bit of that, those sunflowers, and so I've decided that I want to mimic some of that color um, in this frame. So I've got DIY's Queen Bee, and I'm just going to add some to the frame here, not full coverage. I do want some of that apothecary coming through, and I'm going to go all the way around the frame as well. Now, I've pretty much decided which direction um, this is going to go, and you can kind of see the sunflowers when I squirt this and bring the colors back alive um, before I dry it. I do want to bring out, I've decided exactly what I'm trying to bring out and where they are. I'm just doing a little more work uh, to try and get them to show up a little more. And as you can tell, they are starting to come out. You can see those sunflowers now um, popping out of this picture. And so what I have decided is that we will have a little chicken, a little rooster here, um, big, bending down, pecking at the ground. Um, I've got that sunflower down there and the couple that are up above him. And so I'm just getting a base of some white in there. And then I've got some um, Monet's Garden in DIY. Um, and that is a very, very deep green. And then I'm going to pull out some Bohemian Blue, which is a combination of a very, very like dark teal, very dark teal. So it's got a lot of green in it, but it's got some blue. Um, and it is a much darker color than even the Monet's Garden is. And so now I have got some Lucky Lavender. Um, and so I'm just getting a little bit of that in there as a contrast um, to the darker colors that we've got going on. And then I'm just going to 
refine a little bit with some more of Monet's Garden and um, Bohemian Blue. Okay, so now we've got some Carnival Red, and we're going to go in here and we're going to put the Waddle and the um, Crown on our rooster. I don't know what that's actually called up there, but uh, his oh, comb. It's his comb. We're going to put the comb on the rooster. Okay, so we're getting the comb, we're getting the waddle put on. Um, I'm doing both of those in Carnival Red, but then I'm going back in with a little bit of the cherry picked just to darken certain areas um, and blend that in. I'm doing a little bit of finger blending with that. Okay, and then we're putting in the face. We're just connecting the comb and the waddle. Uh, with some red there and now I've got some um, summer crush or fire starter I'm not sure which one I used um, but an orange color we're gonna put in the legs and the feet and the beak and so now I'm gonna take my palette knife and go in with a bit of uh, bohemian blue and the um, Monet's garden and then up here on his wing, I'm working with some sandy blonde um, and some cake batter just to get some color and movement through his little body here. Um, and I'm using cake batter up here uh, on his head feathers going down into his chest. Um, putting a little white there right as the tail meets the... Um, body because I want some of those feathers that are just going to plume up there a little bit. And so I'm just playing back and forth with different colors. I don't want him to be all white. I want some interest in there, but he does need to be quite a bit of white because I want him to stand off of this background and um, just have those sunflowers kind of faded in the distance behind him and have him be the focal point. So now I'm going in with some more Monet's Garden and some more Bohemian Blue and getting his underbelly um, and his chest area in that darker color. I have added a little teeny bit of Monet's Garden into the wing area there um, where most of it is the faded burlap and the cake batter and sandy blonde. Um, and those are the colors that I'm basically using throughout the body. Um, and so I'm going in and putting in a little more Bohemian Blue, getting a little more dimension and darkness through there. And then I'm going to get a little Lucky Lavender and go in there with my palette knife and just kind of drag it in in places. I'm not doing full feathers with this. I'm just dragging it in on certain areas of the feather the feathers that I already have there. And so now we're just kind of do a little bit of fine tuning and um, get a little bit more uh, movement and dimension in those feathers in throughout his body um, and uh, get a little bit better blending going on. Um, and now I'm just putting an eye on him and uh, getting his beak with a little bit of a lighter color in there, a little bit of that um, queen bee going in on uh, highlight area for his legs and for his beak and getting a little layered chocolate in there on his legs as well um, and so when I add the water it's going to show more what it's going to be like when I clear coat it um, now I'm going through and adding some Monet's garden to the frame itself and um, getting some more interest in there I am again not doing full coverage. I did wet down the frame uh, so it would kind of drag the paint along. Um, I want yellow. I want uh, some of the apothecary showing through. Um, and so I'm just going to take a little time and refine this frame. I'm going to play back and forth between the queen bee and the um, greens and get that a little bit more refined. I'm putting a little more queen bee in now 
Um, and then I will get it dry and do a bit of sanding back um, on that to bring some of the wood back and to um, bring some of those other colors that we put on there. And just a bit more refining as we go here. I wanted the bottom uh, chest area and tummy area of this rooster to be a little bit darker and have a little more impact. Um, so just doing that last minute little refining that uh, needs to happen. I wanted to bring a little more white into his neck there and have some feathers sticking up just a little bit off of his uh, top of his neck. All right, so we're just going to do some last minute refining on our chicken. We're going to fluff up his neck here, get some feathers going there. Um, we're going to work just a bit more on his wing here, um, get a little more movement flowing in there, a little more texture um, with the different colors of paint going back and forth here. Um, and then we're going to add just a bit more darkness down here in his chest and his belly. Um, and then we're going to take just a little lightness into his beak. And then it will be time to sign our painting. I'm going to put all the lids on because I am going to uh, sand this frame. So we want to have all the paint good and dry so our sanding dust does not stick anywhere. Um, and so we're just going to dry this off. And then we're going to sand to bring some of those colors, the blue and the uh cowgirl coral back and get some of that wood detail coming back we just want to add that distressed interest to this frame and then blow off the dust and then we're just going to add a clear coat you can see how that clear coat really makes this painting pop now typically i would not dry um, my clear coat with a hair dryer and i will add more clear coat at the end but i wanted you to get the full picture Okay guys, that is the painting. We brought back some of those sunflowers. We put some interest into the background with that. Um, for me, it was just calling for a rooster or a chicken. And with those sunflowers, I have to tell you, I really, really like it. I love the painted frame along with it. I think it complements really, really well. Um, I am obsessed with the interest that we have going in the background now um, and the peaks of the sunflowers that are coming through. Um, it's just so much better and so much more interesting than what we started out with. So I'm going to put in a picture again for you guys to see. Um, again, please subscribe to my channel. If you would, it helps my channel grow. Also, if you could share with your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys hanging out with me, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.